We're going to learn about uh, three-dimensional geometric vector proofs at a high level now and we're going to learn through example. This is a different sort of example to some of the other videos. It's one to do with a tetrahedron. So we're getting away from uh, things like parallel pipettes and um, other sorts of three-dimensional solids. Um, so a tetrahedron, you might remember, is like it's it's basically a pyramid. It's well, got all triangular faces. Okay, so triangular sometimes is referred to as a triangular-based pyramid. Um, the faces are triangles. Okay, so um, if you look at the picture of one here, you can hopefully see maybe a bit of shading will help. That's meant to be the base. So the base is a triangle, as are the faces that stand up. So these proofs are a little bit more challenging. So we have to find an expression for the midpoint of the line joining the midpoints of A, B and C, D, which are two edges of the tetrahedron A, B, C, D. So this question could be given to you with or without the diagram. It's certainly easier to get started with a diagram, but it would work no matter how you labeled it and <clears throat> no matter where you put A, B, C, D. So even allowing for a different diagram, we, um, we can still get this out. We have to interpret what the proof wants us to find. So we're looking for the midpoint of the line and it joins the midpoints of A, B and C, D. So let's see, the midpoints of A, B, if we label it like we see here, midpoint of A, B is there and we could label that E as you see, and C, D, so we can see that there and it's been labeled F. Okay, that's an example of what you could do to get started. And we have to find an expression for the midpoint of the line that joins E and F and you can see that M is already written there. That's what the proof wants us to find. When it says an expression it's a sneaky way of saying uh, a vector expression. So our answer will have vectors in there. Now what's different or could be different about a proof like this is that uh, it may be easier to define the, an origin at some point that's not actually on the tetrahedron. Now, I don't have to put the origin anywhere in the diagram. You could say it's here. It's just nominal. So the origin is, you could see it as sitting there or somewhere just nearby, but not on the actual um, shape given. Okay, so it's not part of the solid. It's you could consider it as nearby. So with ones that aren't um, rectangular prism like or uh, parallelogram like, it might be easier to set the origin up that way. Now the origin actually gives us position vectors. So we're thinking position vectors would be good because we've had experience with two and three D proofs before and we know that getting position vectors defined helps us get going and we'll quickly get all of the formalities out the way let uh, let I over the origin let E be midpoint of AE F be midpoint of DC M B you shouldn't use dittos in a real proof okay so I'm being naughty here um, set your real proofs out fully I'm just trying to keep the video length down so um, M is the midpoint of e, vector E F what I'm going to choose to do first is to locate point E with a position vector so that would be called OE. You don't have to draw it in. So how do we find OE? 
Using vector addition, we need to go OA, which involves another position vector, plus, well, it, I guess I, I should define it as a half of AB, because what we're looking for is OA then down to AE like that which is half because half of AB because it is defined as the midpoint as you see above there. Okay, now we're going to replace AB with some position vectors. Now to get AB you might remember we'd have to go to AB equals AO plus OB. So what we have then is you could rewrite those as vectors negative A and B. Okay, if we um, allow them to be our position vectors in um, lowercase notation, which we've seen before, uh, which could be written as B minus A. So, plus half of B minus A. Okay, I'm just going slow here. Now, um, what we could do really is OA could be written as its position vector A, because so that could be written like that. And so we have A minus half A plus a half B. You could probably skip this step if you, if you're traveling pretty well for this stuff, and that would mean that we have a half outside of A plus B in terms of position vectors. So we could write, um, if we like, the location of E, so that's OE in other words, is that result there. So we, we're going to probably come back to that. For uh, OF now, um, we could speed this up a bit, which I could just call F we can see, if we look at the diagram there, we can go OC plus a half of CD, just like we did above. So that's CD, CD. Okay, so similar, similar to what we did above, you can see that in the diagram, which is C plus a half of D minus C and we've got a half of C plus D, similar to what we had above, similar pattern. We also need to define the position of M now. We've got E and F located. We need to find the position of M. So we could go OE plus a half of EF. All right, so OE plus a half of EF are knowns, and we can we can add them together to get OM. Then we need to use position vectors again. So Similarly, we can write this as F lower, lower F minus lower E, and we will have half of E plus F in lower case. So in terms of the given A, B, C, D, so this implies that we'd like to use these position vectors, lower case A, B, C, D. I marked before this line here, so we can replace E with a half of A plus B. So go back up to that line there. Okay, and F can be replaced with half of it's F, half of C plus D. OK, 
Okay, so that will come out, all those halves will multiply together to come to a quarter, and you'll have A plus B plus C plus D grouped together with our tildes. And um, we've done what we said we would do, we've satisfied the conditions. So it's, I guess it's not a proof, but it has all the elements of proof. Okay, so an important activity.